Uh, what's up, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the 72 PC Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. Uh, this week we have the usual roster of cast members. We have Eric. Yeah. We have Tom. Ah. And I'm Adam. And apparently we are playing a Rocket League tournament. Yeah. That's what we do. Yeah, this is different. It's a, it's a bit of a change of pace. Usually we just queue the casual 3v3 lobbies. This time we're doing a tournament of some sort with the in-game yes. tournament feature. So this should be fun. No clue what skill bracket this is going to be. So um... yeah, we'll <laughs> see how it goes. Either way, I'm ready for it. Yes, either way. Um, how's your guys' week been? What's going on? Um... Chill. Chill. Chill is good. Well, I, I say chill, but <laughs> I, I was on call. So as soon as I got off of on call, it was chill. Yeah. Did they bother you a lot on call? Um, yes, no. Yes, no. Not as bad as it could have been, but it wasn't pleasant. Okay, fair enough. It's usually how on call goes. <laughs> the guy before me got 11 or nine pageable occurrences during his on call. It was rough. That's a ton for my team. So, what's a pageable yeah. occurrence? It just means that. Depending on the time, it went bad. Okay. Your phone will go off saying, "Get on, sign on now, and fix something." Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's five o'clock in the afternoon or three o'clock in the morning. Ooh. So yeah, that for him it was super rough. For me, it was it was okay, but it is what it is. Tech life, part tech, of what you deal with. Tech life. Very nice. Time, uh, time where you were you were you busy. Um, yeah, kinda, uh, except I was busy like at the middle of the week and then the last two days I was a totally different kind of busy. Um, so thanks to, uh, thanks to some friends of ours, um, we were able to get Renee her first COVID vaccine. Hey, um, cool. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of unexpected and made my Friday a whole lot busier because Thursday at like 8 30 PM. While I was complaining in, in one of our group chats, I'm like, yeah, everything's booked up like eight days straight around us. And I just, I need to get Renee in for an appointment and I just can't do it. And they're like, hang on, give me all of her personal information. I was like, uh, um, that's yeah, a sure. Flag. Here you What's go. Up? <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> go ahead and have it. And uh, Renee gets an email. I'm not shitting you 10 minutes later saying, hey, you have oh. an appointment. It's for tomorrow. It's for 2 p.m. Hope you're not doing anything. Good luck. Okay. And uh, yeah, it, this place was literally an hour away. So we drove an hour, um, <laughs> took a big, big ass road trip, uh, <laughs> got her a shot and then drove an hour back. It was, it was like yeah. a, a three hour, just crazy amount Adventure. of shenanigans, yeah. but, but she got a shot. So uh, yeah, we're, we're Very both nice. like the first first firmware update for our 5G upgrade. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I get my next one here in a week and a half, and then she gets her her second uh, firmware upgrade here in uh, three weeks. I want to say. Nice. Three, two. Have you gotten the? Three. Uh, you oh. Started... <laughs> yeah. Moderna's a four week thing, and Pfizer, I think, is a three. So. Yeah. Pfizer's a two. Is it? I thought it was a three. Yeah. Three. It's three. Huh? Oh well. One of them was a two, but either way, yeah. that's fucking yeah. rad. You started hearing yeah. the echoes of Bill Gates' voice in your head yet? Well, we did go ahead and buy a Zoom. Uh, we have an Xbox <laughs> on the way, Zoom. and uh, <laughs> I've installed Windows 10 on all my Raspberry Pis. So, and uh, oh, also, I'm using Game Pass more, but that's got to be unrelated. That's a coincidence, yeah. I've been getting this burning urge to buy uh, Office 365. Oh, yeah. Well, it's great. Have you heard that if you sign up for an Office 365 family pack, you can save <laughs> over 60%? Uh, Tom, how do you know, know this information? Uh, it you, just comes to me. Did you guys ever have a Zoom back when they were no. a thing? I had a friend that did. It was actually a really nice device. Yeah, I loved it. They're I had really the little cool. one. I had the real little one. It was cool. I broke the screen I on went, it. Uh... I went straight from like generic MP3 players to the uh, the SanDisk Sansa. I don't like know. Yeah, that tiny that screen one. on it. It was it was great, and I hacked it and put custom firmware on it because you know how I do. <laughs> so I feel that like that era of technology, it was things were booming so fast 
there were a few players that got out ahead of things and it hurt them. Yeah. And I yeah. feel the Zune was absolutely one of those things. They got dreamcasted. Yep. Yep. 100%. By the way, uh, thank you for that. That's now an official verb of 72 pin connector. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it was great, but, you know, it got dreamcasted. So yep. what can you do? It came out too early and something better came along not long after and it got overshadowed. That's I'm not even willing to say better. I'm not even well, willing to yeah, say better. That's fair. Something else came out. <laughs> Something else came out that caught on and overshadowed yeah. the the other, arguably, yeah. Though I will, the impressive thing is, it got overshadowed by the console that to date has more games than any other console. Yeah, yeah. Those, Specific I releases mean, like PS2. Nintendo doesn't count because Nintendo yeah. has everything on it. Yeah, the PS2 was because like they wanted to sell you console. Mario. Yes, the yes, PS2 it was. era was was so so good. Well, because that was the when Nintendo started to, I don't want to say bow out because GameCube was really good. It's just I don't think its sales figures were what they wanted. Yeah. The Xbox was excellent. The PS2 was great. The GameCube needed a new controller. I don't care what the fuck you say, Tom. I hated that controller. It's the button layout controller. was goofy, but it felt really nice to hold, I think. It felt great to hold. But then again, I thought the fucking Bertha felt good on that for the Xbox too. I never <laughs> liked Bertha. I just have gigantuan hands though, so it helps. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh I got I got fucking called out today in a meme. Bastards. Oh. Um there are two side by side pictures and it said uh what you think Zelda looked like twenty years ago, and it had a picture of Link to the Past. I'm like, yeah, duh. And it said what Zelda actually looked like. 20 years ago and they had a picture of the wind waker, the wind waker. And yeah <laughs> it came out like and 18 like, fucking years ago oh i'm old uh it's like oh my god the knife it twists dude those <laughs> hurt when uh, you it, those realizations that dude like we're old yeah we're old we're old they happen too often I'm so fucking old <laughs> so are you, I, I so are you guys a a, a a back millennial or a knees millennial <laughs> uh <Back>. knees <laughs> both <laughs> <laughs> um i'm generally not too bad um i've discovered early in my back eight like even before i was old i had back issues and mm -hmm. i've come to find yeah, out that so. if i sleep with a pillow between my knees alleviates it hold on because it's like more of a hip thing, I guess. But. Oh, okay. Very nice. Also, I want to call this out. Um, went to Total Wine today. Uh, found this amazing can of beverage. What the fuck? Is that a it peanut is, butter cups on the, on the thing? It is a uh, left-handed brewing company, peanut oh. butter milk stout. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's excellent. Oh, my excellent. God. I'm waiting for it in nitro. This is not nitro. Yeah, no, okay. Not nitro. Like, okay, peanut butter stout sounds weird. Like, I've had peanut butter beers. They've been okay. But if left hand is doing it, oh, if left hand is doing it. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be doing it. Left hand is a great brewer. And we went there because um, it's total wine is for anyone who's around them. They are a nationwide chain, but they are like few and far between. Their selection puts places like Bevmo and other specialty alcohol stores to shame. Yeah. And um, I'm very fond of breweries I come to age with, and I try to find them. And out at Washington, that is fucking difficult. Left Hand is one of those that I grew up learning or liking beer with, and lo and behold, they had them. So I was very excited. Very, very excited. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, oh, I uh, made beef stroganoff for the first time. Oh, nice. how'd you like it? Um, I mean, I've had it before. Um, I felt mine came out a little worse in a hamburger helper box. Okay. That's it. I think the hamburger helper box is fine. Um, I, I made it. I, I did it plain as shit just because it's the first time doing it. Ooh. And then next time I'm going to add stuff. But I mean, did like legit just cream of mushroom soup, a little bit of water, 
season the beef, brown the beef, add the soup or the condensed soup, and then add bow tie noodles. Easy peasy. Next time, I think I'm going to, um, I might go all out and um, actually buy some mushrooms, make uh, saute the mushrooms, make gravy off of that. Add oh, okay. in some, um, yeah. add in some garlic and onions. Yeah, like, I, I might do it up do right. It. Bunch yeah. of black pepper. Yeah. I uh... the, only thing, the only thing I won't do is I will not be making those noodles from by hand. <laughs> I've only I've done pasta by hand once. I've done raviolis one hundred percent from scratch. It just doesn't seem worth it. Yeah, it's it. The raviolis I made. I've never had ravioli that good. That okay. said, I typically don't order it at restaurants, so I don't have a whole lot to go against. Jeff Barr already didn't have shit on me, though. <laughs> I hope not. For your sake, I hope not. But no, it's actually really enjoyable. The hardest or the most annoying part is rolling out the dough. Yeah. And eventually I want to get a KitchenAid mixer, so that shit will roll it for me. Mm -hmm. Um... I have got some ingredients coming for my my delicious beef stew slash pot roast slash whatever. It's beef in a pot. You eat it. Um, and we're trying something different. Usually I just chunk up potatoes and throw it in there. Uh, this time we're actually getting tiny mini potatoes and we're just going to throw them directly into the stew and see how yeah. that works. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm interested. I'm Changing things up, guys. It's uh, it's getting crazy over here. So if you ever do steak and you're like, man, we don't want to do mashed potatoes. We still kind of want a potato, kind of want fries, but don't just want to do bag fries. Red potato. Those uh, those little potato petites. Yeah. Like what you're going to be throwing in, have them and then uh, throw them in like a mixing bowl and dump a pack of dry ranch pack or seasoning on them oh. and then bake that shit. Holy shit. That sounds good so fucking good what we've been doing um there's this thing called like the little potato company and i don't know if it's like a specialty thing but renee gets them because she gets these meal boxes occasionally um and it comes with a, a seasoning packet which isn't anything super fancy but a little bit of vegetable oil one of those seasoning packets hit it with some salt you're done but honestly i'll just do red potatoes olive oil salt and pepper and you're done yeah and i mean that's it's so good. It's so home fries. Good. Yeah. Yeah, we actually we actually went to one of, or we got uh one of the restaurants that we used to always go to pre-pandemic. We got some food from them. And that was always one of the big things like they had this huge fucking scramble with like all these fucking potatoes and feta cheese and like zucchini. It was such a weird breakfast mix up. It's so good. <laughs> We got uh, steak and spaghetti and meatballs last night from a, a restaurant we haven't tried before, and it was goddamn incredible. They, that uh, was two orders, right? That wasn't a thing. That was yeah, two no, things. No. It wasn't okay. like surf and turf. Yeah, two <laughs> spaghetti and orders. steak. <laughs> you know what? Oh, steak. I, I was making it. sure. <laughs> I respect I, it. Just like an I actual ribeye steak get. and then spaghetti <laughs> on top like they do the mushroom gravy or whatever sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> or instead totally of chicken parm, it's ribeye parm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was excellent. Uh, like the they don't have a what do you want like medium rare anything else. They they say hey in the custom section, tell us what uh, how many degrees you want your steak to come out at. It's like, oh. Holy fuck! All right. Uh, so I I had to look it up because I don't I don't know steak temperatures by heart. I was like uh. This one that's on the edge of medium rare and medium. 142.6 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> so you were looking at probably what, like 145? Uh, yeah, I think it will ended up being 145. 145 it's is like, like medium yeah, rare, isn't there. it? Yeah, it's, it's, like it's, right the, upper, it's, up, upper it's the upper part rare. of medium rare. Okay. Um, I really did like the seasonal vegetable they gave us. And I, I wish I knew what it was because Renee and I have no fucking idea what this vegetable was because i was really? expecting like a asparagus or like here's some broccoli nah mm -hmm. it looked like carrots but it was white but it wasn't as like fancy as a parsnip like it wasn't spicy like that did it taste like carrots uh, because there are wild carrots that are white 
it it did kind of taste like carrots, but I don't know. There's, there's a little off, more or purple to it. carrots too, I think, or possibly white asparagus. No, because it, like it was, it was very much a, sh- a carrot shape. So maybe it was just white carrot, but it was like it was really good. Don't don't get me wrong. Like the ribeye was incredible, but <laughs> holy shit, that made the meal. Little does Tom uh, know it was actually oh just God. like carved potatoes. Mm. It was so fucking good. But yeah, I I was I was in heaven last night and I couldn't move for a very long time. But <laughs> once I did move, I was playing some uh some Pavlov and guys, I'm I'm getting decent. Either I'm good? getting decent or the world's getting bad. Um cuz I regularly second. yeah, I'm regularly at the uh not like the tippy top, but up in like the upper upper third, upper quarter. At, uh-huh. at worst, right in the middle of the scoreboard, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, there was a moment last night, and I, I'm really disappointed because I'm like running around with my headset on looking for my keyboard so I can slap F6 because uh, I wanted the clip. But it was me. It was... Uh, okay, let me set the stage here. So, it's 9v9. Next point wins the whole game. It's been a really good game. All teams evenly balanced. We're We're just out here, man. And uh, it, my teammates get grenaded. Everyone's dead. I'm the last person alive. It's 1v4. So I I have, like, no money. I drop my shitty gun on the ground, pick up my buddy who died in front of me, grab his gun with a sight on it, and I'm, like, angling and sneaking around and doing, like, my rainbow six leans. I took him out in a 1v4. Every single one ended up winning the game for the team. It was nice. goddamn incredible. That's Two of those were headshots, just with a peek around the corner. Bang, bang, bang. Switch fire mode. Light this up over here. It was it was goddamn glorious. I was so <laughs> fucking proud of myself, and I will never be able to do that again. <laughs> That's awesome, though. So you're a, are you so, a Pavlov yeah. main now? I, you know, I, I have to still say I'm a Beat Saber main first and foremost, but mm. Pavlov is my secondary grind and I am really loving it. It also helps that, you know, I, just like I said last week, I'm in that custom server where, you know, all the regulars are at. So I can walk in and be like, hey, what's up, dude? And they're like, oh my <laughs> God, it's Tom. And it's it's gotten to the point and I... I guess I guess I'm bragging. Here here comes a humble brag. It's gotten to the point where if the teams are fairly balanced, but you know, kind of leaning towards one side and I join a team, people move to the other team to make sure that things stay balanced. Like <laughs> I'm actually uh You're a good force enough to be a of yeah. some kind. <laughs> like I, I have an impact on the game balance now, which is kinda fucking stupid to me because that's never happened before. <laughs> That's cool. I need to dive back into some Pavlov sometime. I I'm enjoying the hell out of it, and uh, it's all about it's all about the utility and the upgrades. Like uh, last night, somebody got a four man kill with a single grenade, which was fucking oh, ridiculous. My God. It was beautiful. We were all lining up like we were walking in there, goddamn firing squad style, just walking and blasting <laughs> as we went. And some someone's like, no, 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 fuck that. And they primed a grenade. They cooked it for a hot minute. They chucked it over the wall. And by the time we saw the thing land, it blew up and killed four of us. Jesus. It was a fucking bloodbath. Um, so, yeah. So while that, I, I mean, that's a great grenade, right? A gr- good yeah. play. But I think that may, might have been a little bit of positioning error, error on your guys' oh, part. Oh, yeah. For sure. You, you, guys, we were in, literally you guys were in grenade up. formation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're literally hanging out. And it's it's kind of like, I get it. Now we're both dead. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, trying to think of something else like there was something else cool that happened last night but anyway pavlov it's fun we should yeah. play more it's cool that you have a, a group that you can just kind of jump in with and 
have that sense of com- camaraderie and community and whatever. Like it, it's cool to yeah. have just like a group of dudes, you know, people pop in and out, kind of like our Discord server. You know, like it's cool to yeah. have a place where people just kind of pop in and out and and play games together and. And people, you kind of familiar assume faces that when you, and yeah, yeah, people and, aren't going to be assholes. Yeah, you kind yeah, of know what you get into. Like no one's accusing anyone of like cheating or anything. Like that guy got a four man grenade kill. And we're just like, I can't nope. be mad about that. So we yeah. we all get into like the post game lobby. We're like, oh my god, you're a goddamn surgeon with those grenades. And this guy's like, I I don't even know how it happened. I just I just threw it and then everybody died. I was like, yeah, well, yeah. grenade. Keep doing it. Welcome to a grenade. <laughs> Oh man! I thought Speaking I of everybody that. dying, you're you're getting killed. Oh, we're getting, this uh, is we're getting this rocket and murdered. Goddamn murder! But we get those credits. Yeah. Oh, I did uh, completely ego our Discord. I'm going to publicly apologize for it. Um, I was playing a, a VR game and I I wasn't really in the mood to be social, so I hardware muted my mic mm-hmm. because now that's an easy thing to do in Steam VR's dashboard. Uh. I didn't realize I had done that last week. So I was playing Beat Saber and people were talking to me and saying, (laughs) oh, Tom, how's it going? And I'm just like (laughs) fucking egoing the shit out of everybody. (laughs) Not saying a goddamn word. (laughs) Like, man, Tom's turned into a real standoffish dude. (laughs) Right? It was was wonderful. That's funny. Uh, How's how's the Beat Saber grind been going? Really good. Uh, I'm finding songs that uh, are challenging, but that I can do them. Uh, Saeed, I almost beat again yesterday, and I'm starting to find like more songs to ramp up to mm. to improve my skill set. So very cool. Yeah, you know, I I do not feel like I have any hard blocks right now, but there are songs that I'm working on completing that I haven't finished yet. I haven't found my next Saeed. It's basically what I'm. Mm. That's fair. I've been um, I actually played Beat Saber for the first time in a couple of weeks. Actually, I hadn't played. I played for the first time in a while. Was it yesterday or the day before? I can't remember. It was fun to jump back into it, though. I, I was nice. worried that I would like lose, kind of lose my edge, but I, I feel like I was keeping up with where I was before, so it wasn't too long of a break. But mm. and I was um, I was browsing through the songs trying to find some new stuff to play because i was sort of getting tired of my usual group of songs yeah and it man there's just a lot to weed through like so yep. much of it so so much of it is like anime soundtrack songs and <laughs> yep. me and meme stuff yep. like, it's just so, a lot to wade through <laughs> so there's there's beat saver right yeah. and that's that's the main thing yeah check beast out saver beat- i Beast Saber. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I was looking through that today. Yeah. The, I, the curated songs are usually pretty good. Okay. And they've got people specifically putting together playlists. Like there's a playlist called Songs with Fantastic Flow or Best of 2020. Okay. Um, and with the mod, you can do one click install as a full playlist. So you just hit that nice. thing and bam, you've got 30 yeah. fucking songs to go through. Okay. Oh, nice. I need to do that. Just download a, a full playlist. I really need to just make a playlist of stuff that I like or things that, you know, people can work on certain skills with certain playlists. Oh, yeah. Tom's yeah, approved talk- playlist. Yeah. yeah. Also, I'm going to be the, the Beat Saber content curator. Yeah. This map be is the 72 PC Beat Saber coach. Yeah. yeah. I think we talked about this Which one, Cass. Max. You definitely should yes. do like a little curated training playlist. Yeah. I mean, if, if people if people want to do like Beat Saber sessions, like classroom style, we all hang out and play the same song and work on the same stuff. I'm down for it. That would be fun. Um, oh, also, also. So I usually don't tell you guys about what happens in my bathroom, but I'm gonna I'm gonna break that rule right now. <laughs> oh, um, <God. laughs> Here we go. I uh no, no, this 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 one's easy. Don't worry. Um, I I weighed myself. I'm down to two o three, down from oh, my nice. max of two thirty. So I've I've almost nice. broken that two hundred pound barrier. That's awesome. Uh, and it's all thanks to to Beat Saber and uh, just calorie counting. I'm not doing any crazy diet things. Just literally 
here's my budget. I can either eat all of this cake or, you know, 75 pounds of broccoli. <laughs> Nothing in between. It's either one or, yeah, one yes. or the other. Yeah, one one or the he other. alternates That's cake day and, <laughs> and broccoli day. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I like to have both. Like, I feel the <laughs> guilt from the cake. I'm like, well, I guess I should just eat 45 pounds of broccoli today. It's the same calories either way. <laughs> oh, man. What are, what's I wonder what the most amount of broccoli anybody's ever eaten in a day. Oh, I'm Pounds. sure there's a world record for that. Yeah, there's a world record for everything. That is some Pretty of the much. stupidest shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I know I've mentioned this before, but when I die, like, I I don't want to get into a big philosophical conversation, but when I die, I just want a stat screen, man. It's like, hey, you've taken <laughs> this many dumps. <laughs> yeah, the, the post life stats screen would be fantastic yeah. and you also depressing. This many slim gyms. Yeah, I don't want to know how many slim gyms I hate. <laughs> Sorry, you slept this percentage of your entire living life. Yeah, <laughs> that would just be great. You have this many Steam games, and you have played only this many. It's like, oh no, you can already look at that. You have though. thrown away this much money. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Well, anyway. Oh man. So um I was on the Dota Grind more. Not gonna bore anyone with much of that, but the new hero, uh Dombreaker. Um pretty sure she's really kind of settling in to be a mid hero. Really? She has she has a teleport that gets her around that heals all allies in AoE and then stuns all the enemies AoE. So getting her six, her gank quick and early, her gank potential is insane. What is a gank potential? Uh, the ability for someone to... So you have three lanes. Mid has 1v1, and then all the other two lanes are 2v2. A gank is when one person leaves their lane to get a kill on another. So they catch the other lane unexpected, and then it turns into a 3v2, and you get a quick kill that way. It's considered a gank. Yeah, it's like you're playing 2v2, and you're like, oh, cool, things are going good. I know where my enemies are. And then the third person pops up behind you, and you're like, oh, fuck. And then you die. What yeah. if you just send everybody down the same lane? Uh, people have tried that, actually. But what that usually means is that the other lanes get pushed and you lose all the objectives. You dominate one lane super hard, but you also, because XP is split evenly with the people in lane or people around you, you also are extremely underleveled. Like, mm. that might work in very few, almost no circumstances. It's it's a really easy thing for the other team to play around, though. That's more of a late game thing that happens that they'll group up as a five man because at that point you're no, you don't care about the experience as much. Mm. You're about as strong as you're going to be, and then so you all fight together. Yeah. Hmm. But like, there's actual like getting nitty gritty technical stuff. Like the supports in Dota will leave lane and leave the other person in lane alone. That way, that person gets all the experience themselves to try to boost them up in experience to get above the other opponents in lane so that you can start killing. Like, there's a lot of nuance to how you uh, manage the experience gain in a lane. It's it's actually really cool, and I've enjoyed getting into that process, but I'm not going to bore people here because that's really fucking mundane There's shit. a lot of math. It's just a lot of math, a lot of timing, a lot of opportunity cost stuff. Yeah. But, hmm. either way, throw it up. It's it's Dota. Dota. Yeah. It's, it's the same it's game it's been Dota, for a long time. Dota. Dota. I've been Dota's playing some uh, Rocket League, actually. Like, not yeah. podcast Rocket League. Same. So I took that... Um, <laughs> my my realization as the, the seasons changed over and I didn't get any season rewards because I didn't play enough ranked to even get any of the season rewards. So I was like, okay... I'm going to actually play this season to at least get the rewards for, you know, the ranks I'm capable of. Uh, so, yeah, I've actually played uh, kind of a lot of Rocket League the past week. And it's been fun. I've been doing a lot of ranked. Um, got some games in with uh, a couple of old friends. Got some games in with current regular friends. And I hit GC for the first time in like three or four years. <laughs> nice. I love time. the irony of this. You rock a season three GC ch tag because yeah. the OG season three. The yeah. next season you're ever GC is season three. Yeah. <laughs> and I had somebody ask me like, wait, how did you get that tag? 
<laughs> the season three just started. How did you get that? And then I, I was like, you know, like a lot of years ago, it was like 2017 or so, uh, there was a season three before Rocket League got bought by Epic. And nah, they knew nah, that. What, I think they just kind of forgot. And they were like, oh, yeah, dumb, I'm an idiot. What you but, do is you say, get good. Yeah, I was so good. They're just like, nah, go ahead and take it. We know you'll get there. <laughs> but no, I actually did. I, uh, I didn't know it was happening. We were just playing some threes with, uh, was it me, you, and Rob, Herc? Yeah. Or, okay, yeah. And uh, we were just playing, and Rob was like, or maybe you said, oh, you hit GC. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention. But yeah, it was, it was cool. So thanks to yeah. thanks to Rob for the carry, for sure. And then thanks to uh, Maldini and Flubber for the carry the other day that got me up to <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and you're welcome for me tanking your twos. Hey, no problem. Anytime. Yeah. I don't care about my rank. It's, it's whatever. I'm just having fun. It's nice to have fun with the game right. again. That, that's It's been nice. Speaking of having fun, I picked up a new game. Oh, yeah? Um, It was hella cheap. And I mean, in comparison, uh, PGA 2K21. So it's the current era golf game. A $60 game was on Steam for 20 bucks. EA had a, or a 2K had a big sale and it was part of it. Oh, okay. And you know what? It's super fun. Uh, it's super chill. The end of the night after some stressful Dota, three of us will just get in there and we'll play a round of 18 and we'll set it up to where each person hits after the other. So you watch each other actually golf too. So you're just sitting around talking, bullshitting, and playing courses. And they have a course creator. So of course we found that there was a fucking Pokemon Kanto uh, course. Uh, course. <laughs> Aha. So there, there's a course creator. And so it's Kanto. And they themed it from like going through the game. So like you have the island hopping one when you're trying to get to Cinnabar Island. And uh, all <laughs> sorts like cool. animals all around for the Safari Zone one. And it was it was really well done. That's cool. And then we found another Kanto one that was just awful, and it sucked. But no, um, it was really cheap. And if anyone has that game, there are a few of us in the server that look to play it. Magic Day has been looking for people to play with. I know I've got it. Three or four others I know have it. It's it's really fun. It's a golf game. The swing is a um, use your joystick on a controller or a mouse, and they allow everyone to play at their own difficulty level. So Chris is clearly the best of everyone I play with. But because everyone can choose their own difficulty level, it allows you to handicap yourself to where everyone is around the same level. So everyone feels like they have a chance to win it, which is really nice. It's a really nice mechanic to do it. Like in real golf, they do that too. It's just done a little differently. So it's just cool to see. Glad you're having fun with it, with a golf game. Yeah. Yeah. It does I haven't like played a, really a golf game. Super chill time. Yeah, is I haven't it, played a golf game since so it, like 2012. Yeah, so it's fun, but is it golden tea fun? I have never played a stroke of golden tea. Oh, really? Really? <laughs> golden tea is great. Now, what I have played a lot of was Hot Shots Golf. That was my fucking jam, dude. Mario Golf N64. I don't think I played either. Mario of those. Golf NES. I mean, that I played a shit ton of that too. But no, um, hot shots I always like because that was always the three button type where you hit A, hit A, hit A. Mm -hmm. These are like actual swing with the joystick. And if you like are off center and stuff, it impacts your shot. I really like that. I think it's a good analog for <laughs> like simulating the swing. <laughs> Fuck off. It literally <laughs> is the analog for simulating the swing. But you all know what I'm saying, you jackasses. Um, yeah. But no, yeah. It's, it's a good time. Um, and with... um. Mario Golf supposed to be coming out this year, I think. So, would be really nice. Hopefully so, it doesn't yeah. get just like fucking dropped like Mario Tennis did. That game came out like that, and Mario Party came out, and Nintendo has treated so many of its franchises so well on the Switch with free content updates. Like Odyssey has gotten tons and tons of updates to it, uh, and then Mario Party and Mario Tennis. It's like I don't know. You bought this for for 60 bucks who the fuck cares mario party is such an easy such an easy game to update for that kind of shit just make some oh. mini games yeah they won't and it's such a fun game they could charge for it they have the ability to charge for it 
Mini game bundles. Yes. Also, okay, here it comes. For part for sports slash party game, like what's your favorite Mario one to do that shit with? Just like have a bunch of people over and dick around with. Strikers. I, that's, that's kind of where I'm leaning. I, I think Mario Party Stri- or Mario Strikers is probably it's my like, thing. It's Strikers, Mario Kart, or Mario Party, depending on what kind of night you want to have. The Mario Parties are hit and miss. Some of them were gold. Others were just bad. Yeah. This one was fine for in person because they introduced that board where it wasn't um, you're falling in around a set path and you had free flow where you can mm-hmm. just go where you want. Ah, I love Strikers. I have good memories of Strikers. Did anyone ever play Sonic Shuffle or was that just me? That was just you, I don't, dog. I don't remember Sonic Shuffle. It's on the Dreamcast. Nobody played it. Oh, fair enough. It's Mario Party for the Dreamcast. Oh. Oh. Huh. Oh, you mean Fusion Friend? Oh, never mind. That was for the Xbox. <laughs> and then they made a sequel to that, thinking that people loved the fact that it was Fusion Frenzy. Dude, it was a launch title for the Xbox, so everyone played it because they had it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if a game comes to the console, it's going to... I mean, people are going to play it. <laughs> Though Nintendo could have made a lot of money by selling Wii Sports. Yeah, they could have. Yeah, probably. How'd I make that? Nice shot. Yeah. Uh, I, anyway. Uh, I played what a little else? bit a little bit more Half Life Alex. Hey. Nice. Um Yeah, I forgot when uh when I stopped playing last time, I stopped playing because I got to this part where I was like, oh, wait, right, this is the really stressful battle. I don't really feel like doing that right now. So I saved my game, I quit, and then I dropped it for a couple months. Um, and I fired it back up. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm at that stressful battle. Uh, all right, I guess I'll do it. What's amazing to me is that I've been through that game. This is going to be my fourth time through, this time with developer commentary. And it is still, still stressing me the fuck out it it can scare me it stresses me out i get the fucking white knuckle like combat going on uh it is still really 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 great that's that's literally all all i've got on that <laughs> I, I played uh, like probably two hours of alex and it's, yeah. it's still as good as the first time i played it i actually oh, I, I got some more alex in this week too i've played probably a couple hours as well Nice. Um, nice. Without spoiling anything, I did the train crash part. Okay. Did so you enjoy that? I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> let's see how not to. I guess that doesn't really give anything away. But when when things are exploding all around you, it's really cool in VR. <laughs> right. Did yes. you Did you freak out too when? When you're like, oh, let me let me just hold this thing. Wait a minute, what the fuck? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of knew what was going to happen, but but yeah, I was like, like just to see... holding with one hand, covering my face with the other hand, <laughs> just seeing seeing things explode, and then all of a sudden, like buildings are falling and stuff. It's like, okay, <laughs> this is way cooler than it would have been on just like a regular flat screen. Just being just being in it, you know, it just makes mm. such a big difference. And yeah, it just that changed. was. I think that was what made my dad like appreciate VR. He was doing the slingshot game and you know, he launched his first one miss. He didn't think much of it, but as soon as he got shit to start exploding yeah, and he yeah. heard it and saw it all around him, he's like, Oh, okay. Okay. I get this. Yeah. This is, <laughs> it gets the blood going, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I got to the, my first uh, human enemy portion of the game, uh, which is more, definitely more threatening than just like the, the slow lurking dudes and the face huggers. Mm. So that's pretty cool. I'm surprised at how many headshots they can take, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> um, I, I found in my, my two hours of playing because I, I can take my time now with Alex. It's not, I don't know. I guess I, I'm looking for more things in the game now that I've gone through it the first time. Mm-hmm. I found like little hidden item caches and, and shit that I had never found before. <laughs> like, cool. I, yeah, the game is still finding ways to surprise me. Oh, I also did a really cool thing. Um, 
I, uh, there's a, a head crab zombie coming at me. I guess just a zombie coming at me. And I threw a grenade. I chucked it at him. It exploded in his face. And the head crab didn't die because they can stay alive after the host dies. Mm -hmm. um, so it was still alive. Apparently the explosion pushed the head crab into a barnacle where it got eaten <laughs> right after I, I blew it up. It was really fucking uh. cool. Just like <laughs> get it across the floor, grab and eat. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, the um, the head crabs that proceed to be alive after you down one of the hosts. That, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> That's yeah, no. Of scares the shit out of because they me. always they ju they wait just long enough to like come back to life that you think okay maybe he's not gonna do it and then he does it and you're like ah yeah. <laughs> um i also the the getting the flashlight and playing in a dark area with the flashlight oh. just completely changes the vibe it gets yeah. creepy and I, okay. I like that they lean into that a little bit the area where you get the flashlight, is that not one of the most like visually <laughs> fucking striking things you've ever yeah, seen in a goddamn yeah. video game? They do. It's like, you just look at that and you're like, I have never wanted to be somewhere more and less in my entire fucking life. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. That, I mean, the game does a good job of just putting, putting set pieces out there. Like even getting the shotgun for the first time, like just walking mm. into a room where there's like a centerpiece that's always lit up nicely and stuff. Like it's just, I don't know. It's just really well put together. It's good. Can't wait to play more. Like every, every single chapter in that game has at least one moment where I'm like, I will remember this level layout or this set piece for the rest of my fucking life. Like that is how iconic this level design is. For sure. Yeah. But you know, all the half-life games are that way to, to some extent half-life one and two had insane moments where, you know, I will, I will always remember climbing the Citadel. I will always remember pushing the goddamn crystal into the thing and destroying the world. Hey, spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> I will always remember Lamar. Uh Renee started playing Half Life 2. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Is that her I first don't... time playing it? Yeah, I don't know if she likes it. She's I gonna mean... keep trying it. Yeah. But she doesn't really play shooters or very many she's not a, games. She doesn't shoot her. No. She farms. Kind of kind of freaking her out. She farms and she skyrims. I can't argue with that. Uh. All right, Adam. Yeah. You have a game on your list. That you've never heard I've of. I've never heard it's of. New. Yeah. Uh, it's, yes. It's, I mean, it's technically still in early access as things go with roguelites. Um, this one uh, was turned on to by Maldini. He's like, hey, there's this game called uh, Scourgebringer. You need to check it out. It's a, um, it's like a 2D platformer roguelite with some... Uh, kind of adaptive music similar to doom 2016 so i was like okay yeah you have my attention i'm, I'm into these things these are words that i enjoy when paired together um so yeah it's on xbox game pass so i could just try it without having to buy anything i think it's like 16 oh, nice. something on steam but yeah it's on the xbox game pass it's really good it's um like i said 2d platformer roguelite uh pixel art kind of in the vein of I don't know, it kind of reminded me a little bit of like the old Metroid games a little bit. Um, on the Steam page, one of the reviews that they kind of like advertised, I think it was a Eurogamer review, saying that it's kind of like Dead Cells meets, meets Celeste, which seems pretty appropriate. I'm oh, <laughs> I've, I've seen I'm this. Listening. I've seen this. Um, yes. So yeah, it's it's your standard, you know, roguelite fair, you know, start in in the, the procedurally generated world and work your way through these levels and try to upgrade your character in between games and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's not anything super revolutionary format wise. Um, but the execution is, is really, really good. All of the art's fantastic. The music's amazing. And more than anything else, the movement and the combat are really good. So they lean heavy into just letting you move all over the map you have a double jump and a dash in whatever direction you want and you can run up walls 
and it's it's fun immediately. Cool. Like the the movement is so good and fluid. It it's it's really fun. Um, hmm. As far as attacks go, you have a sword as your main attack, and then of course you can do the whole dash attack or regular slice attack or like a uh, a bash thing, like a like a heavy hit. And then in a room, you can once you kill a certain amount of enemies, it charges up your bar for your gun. So you also have a ranged attack you can use, huh. um, and it's and it's very very much so like offensively focused so there's not like a block you just kind of kill everything as fast as you can so sort of okay reminds me of a little bit of like that doom 2016 gameplay style where you're just like just just kill the things going yeah rip and tear tear, kill the things uh try not to get hit by the bullets and if you have to use your attack to like block the bullets um as far as upgrades go <laughs> I don't know what they're called in the game. Uh, you you unlock these credits that you can use to buy upgrades in like the shops and the levels in the game, and then you also get, um, I think, after a certain amount of those credits, you get a point that you can later use to go through the skill tree. But yeah, every, everything about it is just really good. Like it's fun to just play, but then it's also visually nice and. The music is nice too. I think the the style visually, other than just being like a pixel art game, it's kind of futuristic samurai anime ish thing. Ooh. I don't know how to describe it. It's like a lot of the enemies are machines, but then also like alien, you know, biological abominations and stuff. Uh, yeah. Just, just this cool, uh, interesting blend of styles. It's really just well like put Mom together. To yeah, yeah, just like Mom used to make. <laughs> and it's free if you have Pass. Yeah, if you have Xbox Game Pass, it's you know it's on there. It's free. You can I f- you can try. It I out. feel that there is one game every week that we're calling out that's on Game Pass. Yeah, and then every week I say, Game Pass is just an incredible value. It really it, is. I mean, <laughs> and it just increasingly becomes so more and more over time as they add extra services like the ea play and all that kind of stuff it's like i'm gonna really be honest good, i forgot deal. sony had a had a thing i am oh, still yeah. paying for it for some fucking reason i need to just cancel that although that is the way i play horizon so eventually i'll get back to that um Such a good game. Such a good i game. just i just installed um resident evil 7 uh, hey. through Game Pass. Yeah, oh, it's nice. on Game Pass now. So, yeah, oh, I just installed I didn't know that was on Game Pass. Yeah, uh, so I'm giving up on them bringing that to VR, uh, yeah. which is unfortunate because I really, really, yeah. really need the best evil in VR, but it seems that the sun, moon, stars, and Facebook are all conspiring against me. Yeah. That's a teaser for later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was I was going to bring that up. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it was yep. on our news docket, so I'll wait, but um yeah so i i am going to play resident evil 7 eventually um let's see what what else is i just wanted to play oh right i'm looking at installing fallout 76 <laughs> on game pass so uh, okay not, not, i've not heard good it, things it's bethesda i've heard awful things but you know there are some nights when i do want a vibe out bored out like listen to music and chill with the boys kind of game and i haven't had one of those in a little bit other than rocket, rocket league, league. But, like some nights even that's a little too try hardy for me that's stranding. Um, yeah oh death stranding like i want to i want to finish it it's not really a game i can fuck around with right like if yeah. i lose progress in death stranding or if i really fuck up the game i care um yeah, I in fallout so. 26 i'm just not yeah. And I've been watching a lot of like game analysis videos and people talking about like old school Bethesda gameplay. I'm like, wow, that just sounds kind of nice. 
So uh, yeah, Comrade Bunny is saying she'd play 76 with me. So it's on Game Pass. I I might do it. You don't have anything to lose other than some yeah. wasted time if it's awful. But even then, why haven't we done funny. Rust? Because I didn't like Rust. I haven't played Rust in like since near when it came out, but I didn't actually like it. Also, the un like. The crafting games, uh, if a game has crafting in it, I'm just like burnt out. I don't know why. I've been doesn't burnt 70, out since Minecraft. Doesn't I 76 put, like, have crafting? It's not really the point of the game. Like, I, all I want to do is run around and kill random Fallout enemies. That's mm. that's really all I want to do. Like, I, don't, I don't care about the crafting so much. And anyway, it's not the crafting's not the point of Fallout 76, right? The point of Fallout 76 is to build up a camp and nuke others. I don't even know if building up I mean, because Fallout 4 was building up a camp. Is that the same well, way in 76? I mean, there's multiple factions that could be on a server, then you like battle and like you can have nukes and the nukes aren't really a PvP thing. It's bases. really it's an end game content thing. It makes all the monsters more powerful. You don't actually nuke other people. Oh, no. That yeah, sucks. no. You, you like playing with others, at least from what I understand of Fallout 76, it happens to be kind of an accident instead of how the game really works. Like you see somebody, uh, and that's, that's your interaction. It might you have see, I, re I remember Bubbles and Epoch playing together and like coordinating quite often when they were playing. Yeah, but like, I need 75 clipboard screws. Oh, cool. There's some clipboard screws over here. I remember them going and hunting together, <laughs> like actually actively doing things together. Yeah. In-depth cooperative strategy. Where's those screws? I mean, if uh, you're going to play it and it's on Xbox Game Pass, it might make we, for a fun meme night. Are we, are we getting a crew together? I'll install it tonight. I'll install uh, it tonight. I'll install it, and we'll we'll see if this right. is just a super impulsive, not actually oh, yeah. it kind I of mean, thing. It is widely known as one of the shittiest launches, uh, like in recent history. So, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, let's try it. Why not? Only beaten by SimCity. I mean, yeah, we had fun in Moonbase Alpha. We did. Right. Okay, does 76 have text to speak? Dis despite <laughs> Super Ball being an awful game, we had fun. We did. I have a lot of good memories of ranting about how awful that main menu is. Uh, oh I God. don't under I still don't understand it. I don't get it. Can someone no, no, no. please tell yeah, me? No, it's how? simple. No, it's simple. You buy the game on Steam, so you already have your launcher, right? So then you launch the game, which launches a launcher. But the launcher isn't where you launch the game because the launcher opens the browser and then the browser opens the game. I, I don't understand how somebody could look <laughs> like... If somebody has never made a video game or never played a video game before in their life, I understand how they would think, yeah, this seems acceptable, right? Like almost every single ported game from Japan with the, except, the notable exception of everything Capcom's done in recent memory, like literally all PC ports of Square Enix titles work out that exact same way. They have no idea how shit works. But Super Ball is like, I have never played a video game before. I've hardly used a computer before. This is how I think interfaces are supposed to work. And I just don't understand how it happens. They make better interfaces out of VB, man. Yeah. It's so weird too, because a game like that, like a super indie small game, you think it would have less of the whole like launcher BS. Yeah. Like a, like super, super small indie games. A lot of them don't even have main menus. Like you just launch the game and then you press start and then you're in it. Like that's it mm -hmm. because it's so much Which easier is to just not have all that stuff. But all of a sudden this game comes out that has a launcher with like a weird browser menu thing. And then the game and I don't know. I don't get it. That had to have taken either. a lot of time to put together. I yeah, I. If uh, if you are the creator or creators of Super Bowl, yeah, I'm sorry if, if yeah, you are. Sorry. Uh, if you would like to get on the podcast and publicly tell us to fuck ourselves, then uh, yeah. yeah, we'd be glad to have you. Indeed. Man. <laughs> wow. Um. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. I played some more Isaac this week. 
unlocked some more of the tainted characters, which are the alternate versions of the OG characters that you can unlock via a s- sort of not not really convoluted, but like some a little bit of prep, you know, into the and then going through like the true ending. And okay. I'm impressed with like how much they changed them. Like Ooh. like a lot of the characters some of them just start with different stats and then like a certain item and then that's it. But like these these alternate versions of the characters are not only in the same spirit as the OG characters but have some very unique mechanics behind them. Like it's not just oh okay, it's this character but you're holding this other item or you get to start with this item. Like they fundamentally change how the game's played. Um so for instance, Kane Erky no Kane in the Binding of Isaac. He's the character. Um, he doesn't Before. start. He doesn't start off with a ton of attack power or anything, but he's got a high luck stat. So if you play as Kane, you're going to get a lot of consumable drops and stuff. You're not going to run out of keys. You know, you might be drowning in money by the end of the run. He's like your your heavy luck character. So Tainted Kane starts with this bag usable bag item. And it's not in the usable item slot, so that doesn't take up your your normal space bar stuff. It's like in the bottom right where the cards and the pills and stuff go, but it also doesn't take up that slot. Like, it's just like a permanent item that you have. And there are eight slots in it, and you can use the bag to suck up items, like um, anything that can lay on the ground. So you can't do anything on pedestals, but you can do the keys and the all the consumable drops and trinkets and stuff. So depending on which items you pick up, it will craft an item that you can then use and keep. So like, and there oh, are, no. and this isn't random. This isn't random. These there are recipes. Like you know, Fuck. this many pennies and a key and this trinket makes you know freaking brimstone or something. I don't know what the, the actual ones are, but you can. You can pick up these items, and it shows you what item it will craft, and you can either choose to craft it or or pick up different items to, to see what it'll craft. Like, that so is fucking awesome. So, it's like, that isn't something that was in the game at all before this, and it, they made it just for this character, and it's, it seems pretty in-depth. I mean, you've got a comp, like, you know, any combination of eight different items... That, that had to be a lot of stuff they had to program in to, to make all these recipes for the crafting stuff for one of the 17 plus characters they introduced into the game. So, and each of those has its own little unique uh, mechanic behind it. Like, I'm really impressed with this update. It's really transformed Isaac into like its ultimate state. <laughs> Which is just insane. Like the way this game has changed over the years. It's ten it years changed, old. It's the, changed <laughs> so much, yet at its core feels the exact same. Yeah. Yeah, every every iteration of it is just like a bigger and better version of game. Ooh. It doesn't feel like you're going from like Call of Duty to Halo. It's just like, dude, this is just new guns, new maps, new modes just feel almost feels like a new game but it's still a call of duty kind of thing yeah also Irk, did i tell you about uh the tainted eden no okay so regular eden in the game is a character that starts off it's like a random button so the character starts off you have random stats and like a few random items and it's different every time so it's kind of a kind of a cool change things up kind of character to play so tainted eden is also random but his randomness happens every time you take damage. It completely re-rolls your entire run. The fuck? What? Literally every time you take a hit of damage, every every item you've gotten gets uh, just randomized and scrambled to something else. That sounds amazing. <laughs> so, absolutely. Like, <laughs> like, and impurity. Like, holy shit, I've got like not great items. Let me just yeah run into these spikes. Okay, yeah. that's better. Yeah. Or, oh my god, I'm so good. I'm, br- I'm about to beat the boss. Oh god, I only have like a limp fish to attack people with now. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Does it re-roll your hearts too? I I don't know. I haven't played as him yet. I just saw like what it is. 
So I'm I'm assuming as you get more items, it'll you'll still have that many items, but it then rerolls all of the all of those. So yeah, like in game, you know, if you have 20 items, you're still going to have 20 items when you get hit with damage, but there will be 20 different items than what you had before. Yeah, I'm assuming that's how that. That works, could be but. really cool. All of a sudden, you hit like a guppy transformation. Yeah, yeah, it could be anything. I don't know. It's just wacky. Like, really, <laughs> just reroll everything. On every hit that you take from an enemy, Why man, not? you know how hard it's gonna be to win a round with that, like yeah, uh, couple, all the be. way through round. Yeah, I can't imagine. Unless you get one of the, there's some shit you can get that you can cheese, where um, you won't take damage if you don't move, and that's if you do I that cheesed. with the familiar, <laughs> yeah, I, that's how I uh, cheese my first run through um. One of the alt paths is <laughs> so I got that that item. So I had some items where, um, all right. So so I'm a character with this big laser beam attack, Azazel. Um, okay. And then I got this item that basically changes your tears to where instead of shooting tears out at people as your attack, it's just like one big tier that hovers that you control around, and then as it touches stuff, they take ticks of damage. But Ooh. because I was using this character that has like a laser beam attack instead of tears, it's like this giant laser donut of death that just <laughs> hovers around that you can move, and you know each enemy that touches it takes a ton, tons of damage, you know, really quick as the damage ticks or whatever. So I have this giant laser donut of death, and then I get this item where if I'm not moving around. I become invincible. So so basically you just stand there. You get your laser donut of death into like the middle of the, the map or whatever. And I would just stand there completely invincible. And every time the boss touched the donut, he took a bunch of damage. And I literally blame my controller on the desk. And I'm beating like the hardest boss in the game. <laughs> just watching it happen. <laughs> I had one of those where I had a parade of uh, auto attacking uh, familiars. So I would yeah. just run into the middle of the room, park it, and let the familiars do the work. Mm -hmm. Broken leaf, I think, is what it's called, isn't it? Nod leaf. Or bitten yeah. leaf or something like that. Not, yeah, nod leaf. Great. Yeah. Name. It looks like the leaf from Two Mario. Leaf. Yeah. But that item is like kind of useless if you don't have something that attacks without your input. Because if you yep. move around, it doesn't activate. That yeah, or I, you'd I, be able to do something where you know the boss is about to do something insane, so you just don't move. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, I, I love that it's, if there are items that are sort of useless unless you have another item that, that synergizes well with it, and then all of a sudden it's this you know, stupid OP combo, and it's fun. Or there's items like um, Guppy's Head. Is it Guppy's Head? Where you get the that's nine it. lives. Oh, that's Dead Cat. Dead cat. Yeah, that like you get nine lives, but all those lives you only get one heart. Yeah, it basically takes all of your health away except for one heart, but you get nine <laughs> extra lives. Hmm. But if you're already at one heart, it's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can be super fucking powered, and that is an item for one of the I feel best transformations in the game. Yeah. Which by the way got nerfed. It did? Yeah. Is it not per hit anymore? Yeah, I think it's like every other hit or every certain amount of hits. So uh, the Guppy transformation allowed you to fly. And every time you hit someone with your tears, you would spawn a fly. And it would attack. So if you had like a laser, it was like instantly was like 10 to fly. Every time you, you deal damage, you spawn a thing that deals a decent, about, decent amount more damage. So it's just kind yeah. of compounding attack power but yeah anyways uh that's probably about enough isaac i think we've talked about that a few weeks in a row now because of the update but yeah it's still it's still a ton of fun I, i'm really enjoying the new content that is definitely a game that's got a heart or got a special spot in the 72 pc heart mm -hmm. anyway um what i have no other games tom did you want to say anything about disco elysium this week uh yeah the only my controller is so fucked um <laughs> I'm, oh I'm that um anyway 
Uh, no, Disco Elysium is still one of the very best written games I have ever played. Ever, hands down. Uh, and that's it. It's still great. Right. I did on watch the, 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 the opening oh. sequence of that game on YouTube the other day after, okay, the, after the cast. I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. It's got a cool yeah. style. Yeah, the whole right. game is just oozing with originality and style. Like, nothing is borrowed. Everything in the world is completely unique. Like, everything from the the guns to the places to the names of the races to how guns even function and work in this world. Like, it's not like sci-fi or anything. It's very much grounded in reality, but it's a custom reality. Like, the cops have basically muzzle-loaded pistols. Huh. Like, it's... It's just weird, but also plausible and realistic without it being based in this reality, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah, that makes sense. Like it's it's grounded. That's a better way of saying yeah, that. There you uh, go. It's grounded. That's a good word. Yeah. But uh, I can wholly recommend this if you're looking for a, a big, long, like, narrative and dialogue-driven uh, RPG. Here we go. Tom yeah. loves Disco Elysium. And Disco. And Disco. And Tom loves the Disco. Elysium. It's coming back. You gonna get a, uh, gonna get a fro made out of all that hair? Remember, remember Rings of Elysium? Yes. Yes, I do. Oh. One remember of the, that was the Curry. Battle Royale fad. It was oh, right. Play. It was actually Where good. It was, like the game itself the, it was, was really get good. Get to the helicopter. And you could uh, ride a snowboard. Yeah. And there was like a glider and shit too. Mm. Yeah, that was actually a really but good I, game. I, like I game. liked the idea of like multiple teams could actually win, potentially someone from multiple teams, if they didn't kill each other getting into the helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> what was the other one uh, that was like the um, 80s riding oh, bikes? Uh, uh, Radical Heights. That's yeah. The one. Yes, I yeah. love that one. Yeah, I really like that one. Like Clippy B. Yeah. I guess he is on real tournament people. Rest in peace, 80s game show battle royale game. So there's a, there's always been fads in games. Has there ever been a fad exploited as much as the BR fad yes. that quickly? Roguelites, yes. probably. Yes. Well, well, not exploited, but just And I'm saying that quickly. Like yes. there was a ton of them at once. Yes. What? Open world games. When GTA 3 oh, came yeah. out, in open, Black City, yeah. everyone and their mother had an open world game. Even if it made no That's fucking true. sense for the game to be open world, had to be open world. I actually, I, I that, talked to a person who's hopefully not watching this podcast because I don't think they do, who told me, yeah, I just, I, unless a game's open world, I just don't play the game. Why would I want all the, cho the choices made for me? It's like, sometimes what? I, I want the choices <laughs> made for me. <laughs> Have you never have you never played like a great narrative? Do you like movies? <laughs> How yeah. does he feel about like, movies? I I don't Vandersnatch is the only thing he watches on Netflix. Yeah, like I, I don't get it. Or Clue. Multiple endings. So yeah. Um that that's a good call though. Um, but that did give a Spider Man two. And Spider Man two was an excellent fucking game. Yeah, it was. Also, um, not just open world games, but I think there was a huge, huge boom of also open world, but the survival crafting, open yeah. world, Craft. whatever genre. Yeah. I think I'm still burnt out from that fad. Yeah. Like I put 7,000 million hours into Minecraft and then everyone and their <laughs> mother had to be Minecraft and I was over it. Well, oh. and then even, even more specific of that, you had Terraria success, and then you had like literally five or six Terraria clones on Steam. Yeah. Yeah. Like one did pretty good, Starbound. Mm -hmm. Then there was like three or four others I followed that just all shit the pants because Terraria's like, you guys trying to cash in on this? We're coming back. What's yeah. up? Here's an update seven years later that completely doubles the content of the game. <laughs> yep. Okay. This is the last one, we promise. Three years later. Two years later. What's up? Yeah. Here's here's another sixty percent of content. Boy. <laughs> it's your boy. <laughs> Which is, by the way, that's what Bonnie Isaac did too. But yeah, I respect it. 
Fuck yeah, that's right. Because man. fucking the, Edmund, the last Edmund the last Edmund expansion was supposed to be the last one too, and then they came out with this one, which is like, you know, an it's like bigger than all of the other DLCs combined. I'm I'm calling it anti Kojima ing right because Kojima always said no, this is the last Metal Gear, but like he fucking hated making Metal Gears there after two, and he kept doing it because Konami kept paying him. It's it's the anti Kojima because Edmund is just like no, nope, that's it. We're done with Isaac. I'm really happy with where we ended up. This game has been a tremendous success. Outsold our our greatest highest expectations. Six months later. So we're dropping new Isaac so, because I just have fallen in love with it all over again. We figured out there's this mod that they made for two years that was incredibly close to the original design of the game and has tons of content. And we contacted the guy and hired him, and now it's part of the game plus a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Which, so by the way, is like a, a modder's wet dream, right? <laughs> Getting contacted yes. by the devs to put their <laughs> hard hard work into the actual game. Officially. I would argue that most mods in the back of their mind is what they ultimately want, but yeah. they just don't think it's ever going to happen. Right, yeah. That's, that's the dream, right? It, it, because, yeah. Like, look at look at Counter-Strike. Look, like, way back in the day, 1998, right? Valve says, holy fuck, people are buying Half-Life because, you know, I mean, I guess they that Half-Life's okay, but honestly, they don't even play the single player. They just install this mod called Counter-Strike. <laughs> And that's that's it. Can we can we hire these guys? And a year later, it's the fucking yellow box on the shelf. Counter Strike colon Half Life. It's like, <laughs> wait, hold on. This seems backwards. And they did and they did that again with Portal, didn't they? Yep. Orange well, box. Portal Portal wasn't a mod. Uh, uh, like the idea of Portal was a a student grad project. student. Yeah, it's a a student project called Narbacular Drop that had the the idea of portal technology and when gabe saw it he cut them a check literally sitting there in the demo it's like well mm. we're just gonna uh hire you now thanks uh can you can you make something so yeah portal was 100 percent developed by valve direct okay Fair enough. but they got the idea external and hired it in so yeah. it'd be created yeah you can also look at dota just literally a warcraft 3 custom map yeah, that war that uh, Blizzard's probably kicking their ass because of because yeah, that would have made. Hey, you're not using this Dota thing. Can we have it? We'll we'll strip it of all your like uh, proprietary names and like copyright and characters and stuff like that. And Blizzard's like, yeah, whatever. It's just it's fucking Dota. Who the fuck cares about Dota? Several oh, million dollars in esports later, uh, people kind of care about Dota. Yes, yes, so, I do. Yeah. Anyway. Anyways, the news um, we were going to talk about. For the about. news. Yeah. Yes. Um, all good news. Well, kind of. Uh, VR headsets on Steam hit a record high for third month in a row. The facts for third month in a row, I feel it's kind of like silly because if last month was the highest, it's yeah. probably a good chance the next month's going to be higher. Yeah. But mm -hmm. anyway. Um, yeah. 2.9 million headsets. That's a lot of That's headsets. That's good there's yeah. it's starting to saturate a little bit which i think is good for vr because developers will see it as an actual viable market to make money now mm -hmm. so let's hope it anyway um moving on resident evil 4 is gonna have a vr mo or made only for the quest 2 no, I didn't read this, so I'm going to have questions. Remember that thing we were just talking about, how the VR market was getting saturated enough that maybe it'll <laughs> be a, you know, have an expanded marketing demographic? Yeah. And then, and then, and then they're like... And oh, then Facebook's what, like, yeah. nah, dog. Yeah, let, let's do an exclusive yeah. VR game. Let's segment that Oculus out. To, not to the Oculus, but to this one specific headset. And Which is such a horrible move. Yeah. Is, is I mean, it is crazy. the most popular headset. I get it, but still. At least lock it to your own fucking ecosystem, yeah, not just, just a single headset. It's like, okay, fine, whatever. Lots of games are Oculus exclusive. 
cool, go for it. I'll play it with revive. Um, but I mean, I like literally just one headset. The fuck is are that? They, a also, a graphics are, card. are they going to have a headset yeah, like a 1080? Are, are they going to have a hardware check? Like if you're on the like a quest one, it's like nope, nope, no, 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 no. Don't uh, have uh, the magic uh, headset. Uh, it'll uh, actually uh, you didn't buy the newest product. Uh, uh, uh. It'll retroactively ban your Facebook account when they find <laughs> out who you are. Oh, Zuckerberg, it, come to your house. You're banned. Personally. Which effectively bans you from being able to use your uh, or your quest as well. Which yeah, yeah. you're fucked. <laughs> Guess you better buy a quest too. Um, yeah. Also, yeah, this- Resident Evil Four. That's the one they go with for VR. Really? Yeah, I know, right? That said, Resident Evil 4 is not a small game. I would argue that it is the most popular Resident Evil game. I guess, but... It probably is. At and least by unit goal. I, I saw, and it... I imagine that my reaction was the same reaction had by a lot of people, which is, I saw on Reddit, Resident Evil 4 VR reveal trailer. I said, okay, um... Where do I buy this? When does it come out? And how long do I have to wait to play it? Oh, God, I'm so excited. And then I click the story, and it's like, if you have an Oculus Quest 2. Like, oh, well, fuck you then. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a shit move. Like like you said, I don't like the idea of a Rift or an Oculus store. But since you have one, dude, don't, like, you're fucking over your own player base. Yeah. Why would anyone trust Facebook at this point? Why would anyone trust Oculus, right? You're you're fucked for trying to use a headset without data collection. And you're fucked with exclusives. And hey, if they come when they come out, not if, when they come out with the Quest 3, what's to make you think that the next hottest game is gonna be like, oh yeah, remember that headset you paid hundreds of dollars for? Yeah, no, sorry, you're not getting the big games. We gotta sell more of these other headsets and still steal your data. <laughs> Ah, such a shit move. Do you guys want to talk about something happy before we get out of here? Um, no. While, while we're on Resident Evil, can I quickly mention that they did another um, presentation thing for Resident Evil uh, 8 Village? Is and, the woman even bigger? I want to be uh, like 700 feet tall by the end. No. Just keep um, expanding the size of the characters. I'm pretty sure it's the same large woman. Um, No, they're doing another... uh, like hour-long demo kind of like they did to the resident evil 2 remake so once you start playing you have an hour and then that's what you get to play and then i think that is also within a window of like a week or something and it's like the beginning of may okay i'll be checking that out for sure good to know i'll probably check that out and that that was going to be my other thing like why are they doing vr and resident evil 4 when they could have done a new vr uh resident evil game or 7 or something but anyway because resident evil 4 vr works really really well on the limited hardware that is the oculus quest 2 and 8 i guess probably doesn't but it's it's third person isn't it yeah maybe they put the camera i mean you could there's ways uh, I just Gosh. meant like the sheer umph of the tech that it takes to run that game, right? It's yeah, like running yeah. running a fucking GameCube game in VR. <laughs> yeah. Cool, easy. Yeah. Running running a fucking you know yeah, brand new AAA release title in VR. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And who knows? They might have. I mean, hopefully it won't be Oculus exclusive, but they might have another uh, VR adaptation to it. They did last time. So. I'm just gonna pirate the fuck out of it. Like I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna find a mod that makes it work on Steam VR, and I'm just gonna grab it. Like I, I would buy it. I, I have no issue plunking down the cash. This is something I actually want. But if you're not gonna give me the ability to buy it and play it on my platform, I'll find my own way. Fuck you. All right. Last bit of news: Nvidia DLSS will be natively supported by Unity by the end of this year. That is huge. Yes. Yeah. That's really cool. I can't wait to see Tarkov with this. Uh, don't hold your breath. Yeah. Tarkov's oh. still running on Unity 2019, 2018. Okay. But they'll, they'll probably get to that after they uh, finish Streets of Tarkov. Yeah, which is going to be in like eight years <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah. 
It's, it's, yep. It's, thank, it's, thank you for putting that in layman's for those who <laughs> wouldn't understand the reference of what that meant. Uh, listen, Tar- I, I love Tarkov, and I like what they're doing with it, but it is not the quickest dev cycle. I'm going to admit that. Um, well, some are. Like, they do a lot of really quick iterative stuff, but some of their big shit takes forever. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, I guess they have a, I think they have a bit of an ambition problem. Yes. What? Yeah. That that said, I think I like them as a dev house more than any other dev house currently. Just because of their pure openness to the community, quick turnaround, and just they're super transparent about what they're doing. Sort of. And I really appreciate that. (laughs) Well, no, what I mean, though, is like, yeah, they'll update like, hey, we're changing some prices around. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't tell us about that. But like what they've been working on, what the big releases are. I love that. Yeah, they do like they do a dev podcast every once in a while, kind of going over the what what's coming up and what patches coming up and when those might happen and that kind of stuff. What you can expect. And Yeah. yeah, it's a good time. And you always get your uh, bi-monthly uh, Streets of Tarkov update, which yeah. is nice. And I'm not going to lie, though. Like, some of the screenshots and shit they've shown at that level, that level looks like it's going to be fucking sweet. Yeah. I really do want them to get that pulled off. Mm-hmm. But as they said, they can't, they're can they running it at, what, 40 frames or something right their, now? Their Jeez. goal for that level is to get people with, like, decent rigs to run it at 60 frames per second. Fuck. So that's kind of rough, but yes. You know. But you don't we'll, have we'll to see pull, as long as you don't have to play the level. Yeah, true. But still, I, I I don't like the idea of people with worse computers just straight up not being able to play like the biggest coolest level in the game. Yeah. Or what? Yes, that, that sucks. But would you rather them not be able to, or no one be able to? Yeah, I guess. But I don't know. Like, I mean, in the ideal state is, hey, let's optimize this game because mm. we all know this game is optimized like a fucking trash can. Yeah. I mean, trash right. cans are fairly well optimized. It's generally, you know, a cylinder closed off at one end. And, yeah. yeah. They're, they're not optimized because it doesn't sort the trash to an optimal, like, storage capacity. It just how it falls is it falls. Uh, you see, you're... This is the optimization fallacy because you're not considering the use case of optimization. The 90% use case is not trash sorting, right? That's that's like maybe maybe a No, no, no. I'm not talking sorting. I'm talking like for shape sorting so you can Tetris shit better. Yeah, that is no. absolutely a 100% use case. No, 100% use case is I, I would have like never Tetris from- sorted my trash into my can. No, no, no. You're missing the point. If it Tetris sorts, you can fit more shit in the trash can. Yeah, but you're not optimizing yeah. More shit. Or you, you could just build the uh, if you really want to put that much more in it, just build the tower like a freaking college dorm or something. Yeah. Oh no, that's what I'm you don't need to. If they make it to where it automatically gets things to fit better, because I'm lazy, I won't take the trash out until it's almost flowing. Next time, and if it were to fit better, podcast. we're gonna anyway. Re- let's do a trash can review. Everybody, share your. Let's take footage of our trash cans Plastic and review. Rum- I, I want it to be about a meter tall. Um, lip, lip. I'm thinking like, I don't know, a good foot and a half, maybe two feet. Uh, snap on lid, both sides, flexible plastic. And uh, let's do like a navy blue to maybe a lighter navy blue. You do the, color. you do the. Foot, stand out. Do you prefer the foot pedal open to open the trash can? No, they always break. And or you do you like the ones with like the swinging thing where you just like push the trash into no. the lid and that no, swings no, around? Because it eats up space. Yeah. yeah, it eats up space and it's kind of gross. I like the open mouth can. It's simple. Just, it does exactly what I need it to do and there's no fanciness to it. It's more prone no to smelling to bad though. You got to make sure you take that stuff out if there's food in it. Well, that's, that's all right. I have dogs, so uh, we have a yeah, sealable lid. <laughs> you don't get that option. All right, we're talking about we trash cans have... on the the podcast. <laughs> like, all right, Nvidia DLSS coming to Unity. That's pretty cool. Um, it's a super, trash cans, not pretty cool. Not cool. Uh, uh, and in the terms of like awesomeness scale, trash cans functional but not cool. Uh, DLSS also functional, super cool. 
Um, yeah. Excellent super, super technology. Cool. Uh, we've talked about it a handful of times on here, but in case you're listening and you don't know what DLSS is, it's basically, um, what's it called? What's it stand for? Uh, deep learning. Dynamic. Or something. Or- Basically, it uses AI algorithms to render a game at a low resolution and then basically super sample it up to a high resolution using AI trained stuff so that it doesn't just look like a normal, like blown up image to be higher resolution. Like it looks as good, sometimes even a little better than like a native high resolution, and Mm. it runs better on the PC. So, for example, I was playing the game Control, which was the first game I'd ever played that had DLSS. And I was rendering the game at 720p. The game was sampling up to 1080p, and it looked identical to just running the game at 1080p. And it, I got, like, probably 30 to 40 more frames per second, which is huge. That's awesome. So, this is like... Yeah, because, I mean... You're going 720 to 1080 like that is a 75% reduction in usage. Yeah. So uh, um, I, I've said this before, but it's it's the first time that when it comes to uh, PC games graphics, you aren't sacrificing any visual quality for more performance. It's like the only time where you're not actually sacrificing anything per- for performance. With, um, I mean, some exceptions. I know that there's some occasional artifacting and stuff with the LSS, but, but yeah, like it's it's the first time where you're not really sacrificing visual fidelity for increased performance, which is huge. That's I liken deal. this, I liken this tech breakthrough to Intel when they did their first I course, where a buddy of mine came out and said, "What alien space wreck did they just fucking find?" <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. Because like this is nuts. Like this is really really cool shit. Yeah, and it's I'm doing stuff see... that five years ago we would have thought. No, what what the fuck do you mean? You get better looking with better performance. That those Doesn't are like two opposite ends of the spectrum. What do you mean you're gonna render the game at a lower resolution and then and then blow it and then uh, fill in the blanks to to make the higher resolution? <laughs> that's, that's gonna look like crap. It's gonna look like a checkerboard. But no, it looks it looks great. And not yeah. only that, not only like just for performance and and you know higher resolution, or whatever, but like it negates the need for anti-aliasing completely, mm-hmm. because it just which does is one it. of the yeah which is one of the bigger fucking hitters yeah like it looks, anti-aliasing yeah. and shadows yeah yeah and it looks better than just like anti-aliasing, but anyway. Uh. Yeah, anyway. super cool. So, that's all we got for y'all this week. So, what you should all do is, you know, if you're on our Twitch, go to our YouTube, which is 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. We have old casts there. Check it out. Um, if you're there, cool, but come to our Twitch. Twitch.tv is 72 Pin Connector. We'll be live every Saturday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we have new merch. Uh, merch store can be found on our website, 72PinConnector.com. And you can also find our Discord link there. Uh, a lot of cool people, a lot of cool games. Get in there, meet some people, have a good time. And that said, I mean, I've got nothing else. You guys have anything you want to say before we get out of here? Buy our new merch. It's awesome yeah. looking. It looks really good. And it's some nice merch. I do like the merch. 10 out of but 10 merch. 10 out of 10. With that, though, I have nothing else for you. So, until next week, game on. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs>